in the last session for this week, we're going to start talking specifically about some of the MARC fields used. Um, we're going to focus on fields that relate to title information to start with. The title itself, as appears on the preferred source of information, goes in the MARC field 245. Um, here are the values for the indicators. The first indicates whether or not the title is an added entry. If the first indicator is zero, that means that the title is not an added entry, it's a main entry, as we discussed in the last video. And if there is, if it, the indicator is a one, that means that the title is an added entry and there is some other main entry, most likely either a corporate body's name or a uniform title. The second indicator is used to represent the number of non-filing characters in the title. And what this means is characters that should be skipped when the title is being alphabetized. So if the title began with A, N, or the, you would need to have some non-filing characters indicated. If the title doesn't need to have that word skipped, then your second indicator would be zero. So if your title started with the, you would need to have a second indicator of four, so it can skip three characters of T-H-E, and then the space before the first word of the title to be alphabetized. The title proper is the main section of the title. It includes subfield A for the title, subfield N for the numbering of the section, and subfield P for the name of the section. You won't always have subfields N and P, but they might appear on serials sometimes. The title proper is important because it's used to determine major changes. Again, we'll talk later in this class about what exactly a major change in a serial is and when a new record is required. And then the title proper is used in links between older and newer versions of a particular record. So those, here are some examples of 245 fields. When you're transcribing the title proper, you generally record it as it, transcribe it as it appears on your preferred source of information. Um, you should omit things that vary from year to year, so if something said it was the fifth annual report, not everyone is going to be fifth, so you would leave that out and just put annual report. Um, if it said the 1994 directory, you would omit that and put in the ellipsis, the three dots, to indicate that it's going to be the directory, but it's going to be a different year every time. So here's an example of our serial. We're taking information from the cover, and so here would be our 245 field. In this case, there's not another main entry, so the first indicator is zero. We don't need to skip any characters, so the second indicator is also zero. The title proper of Tennessee Ancestors goes in the subfield A with the period at the end. Because this didn't come from the title page, we do need to indicate where it came from, and so it came from the cover. And we'll talk about this more when we talk about notes later in the class, but you can combine the title from cover information with the description based on note, and so that's what happened in this case. Other title information, usually meaning subtitles, can be transcribed when considered useful. Um, you can either include it as a subtitle in a subfield B in your 245 field, or you can include it as a note in a 500 field. That's catalog of judgment involved there. You can decide which would work best for you. Another title-related field is Mark Field 246 for variant titles. These are other forms of the title that don't appear on the preferred source of information. The first indicator is used to tell the computer whether or not you want a note, meaning do you want this other title displayed to users in the catalog record, and also do you want an added entry, meaning should this be indexed in the title search. I would say most of the time you do want an added entry, so I would recommend using either one or three for this indicator. The second indicator tells you the type of title. So if you did have a title from a title page and you included the cover title, which was different in a 246, you would use the second indicator of four, for example. And there are a lot of different options as you can see there. One use of variant titles is for titles that appear elsewhere on the issue. So in that first example, minor and workman's advocate is the was well, used in the 245, but Advocate appears on the cover. Um, sometimes you might want to spell out things that are abbreviated or symbols used in the title because your patrons might search that way, so if there was an ampersand in the title, you might spell out the word A-N-D even if and doesn't appear on the item. Parallel titles could also be included in a 246. Parallel titles are titles that are in a different language, so if you had something that was published and it had a title in both 
Japanese and English. You could put the English title in the 245 and the Japanese title in the 246. Sometimes with serials, you'll need to use the 246 if other if the title varies between issues. If they're perhaps inconsistent in how they apply the title from issue to issue, you could go ahead and do that, such as you'll see in those first two examples. And you could also include titles that don't actually appear on the piece, but are useful. For example, if Tennessee Ancestors is popularly known as Ten Ann, you can go ahead and do that. In this case, you would have subfield A for the title, but then you'd also have subfield I, in which you would include a note that explains what this title is. And it's not really any of the categories that you can express using the indicators, but it's popularly known as. And this is something you probably would want to display in the record, so you would want to have a note for this as well as an added entry. So those are the fields that deal with title information in a serial record.